and welcome back. Now this week we're going to be looking at a serial isolator uh, on this little PCB from JLC PCB because I found this exceptionally useful when debugging stuff from an Arduino or an ESP32. What do I mean by that? And yes, this is the PCB that had to go back to JLC PCB four times before they said, OK, Bacon, you finally got it right. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Four times that PCB went back to JLC PCB. I know. I'll tell you about it if we've got time at the end of the video. All right, not now. We just, let's push on. So the circuit diagram for today's PCB isn't mine. It comes from Practical Electronics, and it's, it's this actual design here, Mini Isolated Serial Link. Now, uh, my design of the PCB is quite different to this because I've added a couple of things onto it, and I just... Well, I'll explain why I did it the way I did it when we get to the PCB bit. But um, Practical Electronics used to be called Everyday Practical Electronics for a while. Um, there was a separate publication called Practical Electronics. I know it's confusing. Um, way back in sort of the 80s. And um, I have a claim to fame. So here we have another version of Practical Electronics. The original Practical Electronics, that is. Um, now, this one is from... If I show you the date on it, right at the top there, July 1985. Quite a while ago, yeah. And, uh, oh look, that's only a pound, that issue. That new one is um, £5.49, that's inflation for you. But I'm not here to talk about price, I'm here to talk about a circuit that was in here um, that uh, I submitted. Now, as you can see, they used to have a feature called Ingenuity Unlimited, where they invited readers to submit circuits. Uh, for things that presumably they've built, right? Now, way back in 1985, I was a, a junior computer programmer and I built something for my team leader, my boss, effectively, right? And it was, in fact, this intelligent level crossing warning lights controller. Um, we'll have a quick look at the circuit in a minute. But uh, I got paid, would you believe, £40 for this. And as you can see, it's quite detailed. It uses seven integrated circuits and it's all digital. I got paid £40 back then. doesn't sound a lot now, but let's just work this out from 1985. So back in 1985, as it says there, it says £40 in 1985 is actually worth £129.14 today, which is, you know, significant, isn't it, I suppose? If I'd submitted that circuit and they said, here's £129, Ralph, I'd go, yay, thanks very much indeed. As in fact I did back in 1985. 40 quid was quite a lot of money. Just to go back to that circuit that I had published way back in 85 then, this is what it was supposed to do. I'll let you read it. I'll put this PDF actually up in the GitHub so you can have a read. It's, it's well, it's interesting to me. Um, it basically flashed the lights on a model railway crossing intelligently. The, the, ba the basic one that my team leader had, as soon as a train crossed the one of the sensors, the lights start flashing for 20 seconds and then stop whether the train was still sat there or not. And he thought there must be a better way. So he asked me to design something. So I did. So what I came up with is uh, this circuit here, seven ICs in total. Basically, I looked at this and I go, my goodness me, what did I do there back all those years ago? And uh, it is basically a bit like reading a computer program, this, you know, basically an if this and not that, then this. And it works its way sort of down, down the circuit, really, until it says, yes, I'm going to flash it or I'm going to continue or not, as the case may be. Now, we could do that, what that circuit does, with an 80 tiny 85 and 100 times more today. So it just goes to show, doesn't it, how far we've come. Anyway, that was me, R R S Bacon, it says. Yep, me, Luton, that's where I was at the time. Oh well, it's my claim to fame. Let's move on with the real circuit for today. Uh, because this um, this little board here overcomes a couple of issues that have worried me over the years. Um, and I've tried to circumvent those worries with other items, but we'll see. Right, what is it? As the name implies, it isolates the serial link to your computer. This is a CP2102, right? Pretty much functionally like one of these, this uh, fake FTDI USB to serial interface, right? Exactly the same, functionally. Okay, yes, we all know you can buy these for $2, even though the chip itself is more than that, so mm -hmm, make of that what you will. 
but they work well enough, especially for us hobbyists, right? So you plug this end into your computer and these pins here go to your microcontroller, normally VCC, ground, TX and RX. And what it allows you to do, of course, is to retrieve the stuff coming back out of your microcontroller into your USB source and can therefore debug stuff. And yes, you can, of course, plug your USB cable directly into your Arduino and do pretty much the same. But there are often situations where either you don't have a USB connection on your microcontroller board or you'd prefer to keep it separate. I want to do a shout out for JLC PCB. No, stop, stop. Don't go away. Look what they're doing. $2 for aluminium circuit boards. This is absolutely incredible. If you've ever wanted to try an aluminium PCB, now's the time to do it. Now remember, aluminium PCB is a single sided normally with the aluminium on the bottom. Then you have a dielectric layer that uh, transfers the heat up to the top copper layer. Now aluminium is very, very strong and it will suck the heat away out of your components without the need for extra heat sinks, for example. Go and have a look at their website and check them out. And there's more. JLC PCB now allow you to create your own parts library because there's nothing more disappointing than creating a PCB and then finding you can't get the parts or there's a big long delay. Now you can create your own custom parts library to ensure you get the components you need and of course the associated footprints so you know they're going to fit on the PCB itself. To get to this page that describes everything you ever need to know about creating your parts library simply go to their home page and then click on the link at the top. Very, very simple and a really, really useful feature. Go and check out JLC PCB now. Now, when you get a, let's say you've got an Arduino like this one here, right? And let's assume that you don't want to monitor it via the USB port. Um, because as I say, I find that irksome where the USB and the uploads and the serial out sort of interfere with each other. And I like to keep sometimes a serial monitor attached, even at boot time, so I can see what's happening, yeah especially on ESP32s, more than Arduinos, perhaps. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll assume that um, this is con connected to here. So we've got the, the TX and the RX connected to one of these devices up here. So what we've got is a CP2102 USB to serial converter. Great, that's one half of what you might use anyway. But then you've got this opto isolator here, and then you've got room for another one here, plus another CP2102 there. Now that gives you your USB to USB the same way that this has it. But that's overkill. We don't need that most of the time, at least I don't. What we actually want is USB to serial, CP2102, isolated and coming out with those same pins here, RX, TX, ground, VCC, um, without this and that, that's what this board now does the way I've configured it because although I've soldered one of these on I'm actually allowing cables to be connected directly to those pins without going through this end first. What's it doing and how's it working? Well I'm going to give you a circuit diagram and you'll see within seconds how this works. Right this is the circuit diagram let's whiz through this there's two halves of the circuit but they are both mirror images of one another so let's remove one of them so we don't get confused about what it is we're trying to do here. So as you can probably work out, the dividing line is probably down here like that. Um, this chip is obviously not connected both sides. So we've got an LED here and an opto detector over this side with a Darlington pair transistor. So when your microcontroller sends out some data via the TX line, it basically pulls that line low so that current can flow through this infrared LED that's buried inside that chip. Great, so all your microcontroller sees as part of its TX output on this pin is an LED via a 220 ohm resistor. Great, no problem with that. And this side detects the, the signal on its opto detector here, amplifies it by these two transistors in the Darlington pair array and uh, brings it down here to the RX. See the RX line here comes along here up here to here. Right? Now the 1k resistor there has been specifically chosen by the circuit designer um, so that this circuit will work with both a 6N138 
which is uh, a 3.3 volt and 5 volt device and a 6N137 which is a 5 volt only device but can have a much higher board rate up to 1 megabit in fact. The 138 can only do up to 57500 at 3.3 volts because it's just not quick enough to get those signals into a nice square shape. They, they tend to droop going one way or the other and in that delay of rising or in fact in this case falling the next bit wants to already come into play and it will bang into the bit before it. Now that's the theory anyway. I found they work quite happily at 115-200. So maybe either the manufacturer is being particularly cautious or is not prepared to, to state and guarantee that it will work at 115-200, but I found it does. And maybe you'll get lucky, maybe you won't. Your mileage may vary, as they say. So the other half of this circuit that um, we ignored for the time being is the exact opposite. When this half of the circuit wants to send something down the wire, that is your PC wants to send something to the microcontroller, um, it does it via this infrared LED in the other chip and this is the detector side of that and it sends it into the microcontroller. If you never send anything to your microcontroller, as I suspect 99% of the time you don't, then you do not need this chip. You can ignore this chip, this resistor, this resistor and this capacitor. You don't need to put any of that in at all. All that can be omitted if you never send anything down the line to your microcontroller. Right, here we are. So what we've got running now, then they've got the Arduino running at 115200, as it shows you there, and every five seconds it just outputs this counter. But what we can also do is type something in uh, down here. So if I type in Okay, so what I'm going to do is send hello. So what will happen is it will come down the wire now um, through the second chip, because that's the one that's going to send it via through here. This will then repeat what it's received, send it back out the wire into the other chip, this side, and back out the wire. But the only thing that crosses the bridge, if you like, is um, the infrared LED inside those chips. Okay, hello. There we are. It said hello. Right, let's just type in a, a bit longer line to give it something to do at 115-200. Okay, let's send that. There we are. And as you can see there, it's um, done it quite happily. If I had to down the serial output from 115-200 to 57600, it's not a deal breaker if you need that USB to serial link um, isolation so that the laptop or PC is not connected in any way shape or form to the thing at the sharp end of the business that could well end sending up stuff through the wire and destroy your USB port. If you think do you know what I want to make one of those to protect my PC or laptop just send me your, your address and name ideally and uh, I'll, I'll snap one of these off and let you snap the rest of as you want. They do only work with CP2102s, there we are, that one there. But they are cheap, right? You can get them from just about anywhere. I ordered a load from, um, I think it's probably AliExpress or Banggood somewhere. I'll put links up anyway into the GitHub to show you where I got them from. Um, they do have to be those particular USB to serial converters because the order of the pins is different on each USB to serial converter. USB to serial converter, Done and dusted. Well, wait, wait, wait. Well, I told you I was going to tell you about the problem I had with that PCB because it might affect you one day. You never know. So this is the board that I created, right? And the purple line you see there is the board outline. To create a panelized board, you just say to Easy EDA, okay, I've done my design. Just give me a board with five of these in a column or five by two, whatever you can fit into your 100 by 100 um, PCB area. Right, so I did that, and this is what I got. Here we are. So it's a five by one. So if I move that, so you can see you only do it, you only ever design the thing once, and then you just tell it create five more of these, but you don't see all the components. JLC PCB, no, that's what you mean. It's all a universal language, really. And you think, okay, that's great. Yeah, you've you've done all that. Here are the V cuts you want along the down the line, where you, so you can snap them off. Yeah. And um, that's it. Great. I sent it off and they go, no. Have a look at your outline. It's very messy. 
Those are those are the exact words they use. I think I'm messy. It looks very nice to me. So I took it away, took out the panelization, did the panelization again like this, sent it back to them. They go, no, it's too messy. I don't know what you want. You're going to have to sort this out. Now, unfortunately, this was all done at right at the end of the Chinese New Year as well. So they had this huge backlog of stuff to work through. So it was like, you know, half a day between me submitting stuff and getting a reply back. I think at the end of the day, I think I had like a week's delay doing this. Oh, it was it was a nightmare. So what's the problem then? Well, when I created the panelization board like this, um, I generated the Gerber files and then I used something called um, Gerb view to have a look at them. Let's have a look what it looks like. So here we are. Here's the here's the actual board as seen by the Gerber viewer now, which is the sort of thing that JLC PCB will use. And although it looks okay initially, if you look down here, look where my cursor is, you'll see that you suddenly start getting multiple lines, and the lines get spaced further and further apart. And if I zoom in, look at this. You can see there's there's two lines. The V cut is no longer on the board outline. And again, I don't understand. What you're, what you're doing here, what you're trying to do. And I thought, well, you don't understand. I don't understand either because the first board seems to work okay. But the second board is, a, that one seems to be just about okay. But there it splits and the next one down it splits further and further. And in fact, it was, it was in fact worse than this at one stage. Um, so what I discovered the problem was, I discovered that the problem was that the individual board, namely this one, the board outline, the purple line you can see there, was not a contiguous line. It was, I think it was three lines. So the line on the left here, the bottom line and that line over there. And then a separate line across the top. So although that would have worked for a single panel, when you tried to panelize it, the top line got misplaced slightly. Probably because it isn't quite connected up properly to the remaining three lines. And the way I resolved it was to delete the board outline and put another outline, a contiguous rectangle around my components, and then it was fine. As I say, though, it took me a week. So the lessons learned here are, um, A, create your board outline as a contiguous line if you're going to panelize, and secondly, put that design through the GURB viewer and make sure that what you're seeing there is what you think you're seeing um, over here in in Easy EDA. Make sure the two do marry up, because otherwise it means no, you've got something wrong. Oh well, there we are. Lesson learned. Well, I've learned a lesson. I'm hoping that my experience will make you think before you submit the board to JLCPCB. Just check what you're submitting, because it might look right, but it isn't behind the scenes. USB to serial converter done and dusted. Leave your comments below, and. Um, do give it a thumbs up if you found it interesting or useful or just pass the time of day for you. Oh no, it can get like that, can't it? Great, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.